Welcome back everyone to my Let's Play of Ogre Battle, March of the Black Queen. It's time to head to Island Avalon. We will not be meeting King Arthur here. Island Avalon is an island uh, in Arthurian legend. It is where King Arthur went to heal after uh, he was wounded in the Battle of Camelon. It's also where they say that Excalibur may have been forged, but we're not going to meet King Arthur here. We're not going to meet any kings here. We are going to try to meet two princes though, however. The first prince is the who the stage is named after, uh, the Black Knight, and that it refers to Prince Gars. He is uh, Empress uh, Endor's son, and he's the one who executed the royal family. We were told that in the last episode, uh, or the last uh, map area, Mage Rashidi uses black magic to disguise Gars as Ash, the captain of the royal guard, and uh, to, while disguised as Ash, he murdered the entire royal family, or so we thought. But we found out that uh, one of the nurses who worked with the uh, royal family, uh, Banya, she actually smuggled out King Grand's eldest son, Prince Tristan. So he actually survived the massacre. And apparently now he's all grown up and seeking revenge, so he also came to uh, Island Avalon here. Maybe to confront Gars, who uh, we have the intelligence that he is here. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, if you bring uh, Ash, you would figure he would have some dialogue with Gars. I mean, after all, Gars is the one who basically framed him for the murder of the royal family. He might be looking for some revenge or something like that, but he doesn't. So, there's no use to use Ash for this uh, map. Uh... We will get special dialogue with another character, special character that we will recruit in this map, though. But Avalon is where the Roshian Temple started. Most of its residents are monks. We have maintained political neutrality ever since the beginning of the Zenobian Empire. However, now even we are being ruled over by the Empire. Alright. Well, let's go... Speaking of monks, let's go uh, liberate one of their temples up here. As you can see, we're splitting our army. I'll explain why we're splitting our army. Most of the time, we haven't been splitting our forces, but there's a reason to in this map. Let's pull our card. What do we get? Chariot. That'll help increase our strength. And, of course, we want to keep that card. Oh, we got another item. What do we got? Ooh, the Relic Sword. Oh, you're the rebels who freed Zenobia from the Empire's Deva. I've heard many rumors about you. Please help this island as you've helped others. That uh, sword is really good. Uh, it's a black um, elemental sword. Uh, it has basically the highest strength bonus in the game. Uh, the next highest is uh, 20 uh, from the uh, ogre sword, uh, the black, uh, which is a physical sword, the black sword Fafnil, and the white sword Brunhild. Uh, it does take a massive hit to a character's intelligence, but if you use it on a character that doesn't use their intelligence for anything, like that worm, uh, it's a really good weapon. The only downside of it is it's black elemental, so if you're fighting uh, a character who has, uh, an evil character who has, you know, low alignment, uh, it's not going to deal a lot of damage because the, they'll resist the black element. But otherwise, it's a pretty good sword. Like I said, it gives that massive strength increase. And like I said, you don't have to worry about the massive negative intelligence that it gives if you're using it on a character that doesn't worry about their intelligence. Let's pull another card here. We need to refresh a lot of tarot cards. We used a lot of them in the last uh, map, so. Keep the card. Please defeat the Black Knight. When that cursed man heard that the temples wouldn't bow to the Empire, he arrested the Grand Monk Force and executed her as an example. It's unbearable. Please, defeat the Black Knight for us. Wow, he's very bloodthirsty. He executed the old royal family, now he executed the High Monk. Uh oh, we gotta bring this guy to justice. So, well, we get our first enemy unit coming by, the enemy flying unit. Now, to the north here, the enemy is going to be sending its flying units and its water units. Uh, the enemy castle is in the northeast. 
uh, there's a lot of water in this area because obviously it's an island and they'll be sending their flying uh, their water units basically across the north part of the map and then down the western part of the map to flank our, our base. So that's how we split up our army here. Uh, we're gonna send some flyers and a few ground units up here and our octopus unit uh, which hasn't seen a lot of use uh, for a while. Uh, up on the left side of the map here, the west side of the map, to intercept the enemy uh, flying units and water units. The other part of our army is going to be uh, tasked with intercepting the enemy's land-based units, which are going to be coming down the eastern side of the island and making their way across the southern land portion. So, that's how we split our army. We could have, I guess, just turtle around that first city that we first got, but that would make the map really, really slow. So, like I said, instead we're going to be a little bit more aggressive. Orpheus is going off on his own there on a little bit of a treasure hunt. So, let's see if we can finish off this Valkyrie unit here with a wizard unit. See if we can get that, show off that uh, relic sword there. Dope. And that is not good. Every single one of our characters missed the Valkyrie, so well, we're going to have to retreat here because we don't have any healing cards. Uh, otherwise, that Valkyrie could have targeted the wizard and take it out, so... Surprised that the wizard and actually none of our characters did any damage there. Uh, it is night time, and both the wizard and the worm are low alignment units. They should have fought better at night. Uh, but surprisingly, they missed, and... The Valkyrie and the Griffin tend to be more, you know, high neutral alignment units, so... If you figure they would fight worse at night, but... I well, guess it all sometimes comes down to, uh, you know, luck and uh, how the random number generator that determines how, uh, you know, damage in the formulas uh, works out, so... Bonk. And once again, uh, the last time we fought, uh, we took the front row Griffin down to one hit point. Missed defeating it by one hit point. Did it the same there, so. Just checking out our characters there. Going still a little bit away from uh, promoting. We could turn some of those knights into samurais if we want. Once you hit level 7, uh, you can promote to a samurai. And so now let's focus here down on this part of the map. Where we're gonna get some enemy ground units. This is actually a low sky unit. We've got some more ghosts, like the ghosts in the Pogrom Forest. These ghosts are a little bit stronger than the uh, level-wise than the rest of the enemies. Most of the enemies here are levels 9, with leaders being level 10. Uh, but these ghosts are uh, level uh, 11 and 10, so they're either on par with unit leader levels or a level higher, so... So they'll be good for uh, gaining experience. So, if our cleric would hit them, and she took quite a bit of a time to take care of them. Oop, and missed that one, so. Dope. And we don't have any white magic weapons on our characters, so that ghost is gonna be able to flee and get out of here, because we don't have any units that'll be able to catch it uh, right now. So it'll just, I guess, retreat back to enemy base, but that's okay. We'll be able to just fight more ghosts. Get some more experience. Ghosts give some good experience. And here's a good unit if we wanted to use that moon card. Uh, not so much with this unit that we're fighting with, though. Uh, both of the raven men, our raven men in the back row, will be able to target the fairies with their inferno spells. And fairies are pretty weak. Uh, they have pretty bad resistance to pretty much everything. Uh, they mainly just rely on their high agility to avoid attacks, so that one got lucky there. It avoided our Raven Man's attack. So, otherwise, the Raven Men will pick off the fairies in the back, and then our other units in the front will slowly whittle away the health of the uh, their Raven Men in the front row. We're a little too far away to get healing, so what we're going to do is we're going to alter our unit's uh, formation here a little bit. We'll put that Hawkman in the uh, back row, 
the two Raven Men in their front row uh, can only do physical attacks, so that Hawkman will be perfectly protected in the back row. Fairies, like I said, they're not doing any damage but uh, on their own, but they are uh, helping the uh, Raven Men in their unit do damage, so at least they do if they kiss the Raven Men, so. But for some reason, I don't know why they're kissing themselves, so. But hey, we'll take it, because, uh, like I said, the kiss gives a little bit of a modifier to uh, the enemy's attacks uh, power, so by not being kissed there, uh, the Raven are just using their, you know, base strength. So, they're not getting any bonus doing any extra damage, and they're doing a lot of damage, so. So, we'll have to have to re-alter this uh, unit's composition again, throw that uh, imp who took some damage uh, back into the uh, back row. So we see another enemy, uh, an enemy mermaid unit up there. That's one of the new units that we can uh, encounter in this uh, map. So the enemy's going to be using some mermaids. We'll get some uh, mermaids on this map as well uh, through recruitment. Uh, a unit that we're going to find that's going to join our cause is going to come with uh, some mermaids. So that's how we'll get our mermaids. No run away, so mermaids. Who cleans the ocean? Mermaids! And how do they clean it? With tide. So look. Alter our units here a little bit. Uh, put our leader in the front there. Maybe we should have put the other Raven man. He has a little bit more hit points, but Oh well, well we'll see how this works out, so Ah, we snuck by you there, and we'll hang out, move this uh, witch unit, get her in on the action, so we can have our other units there heal up a little bit, and the other new unit that we'll be meeting will actually meet right here, the angels. We're going to recruit angels much later on in the game. Uh, one of the special characters that we recruit will come with some angels in her unit, so that's where we'll get our angels. We could get angels uh, as a, uh, a neutral encounter here in the deep sea, uh, but uh, we're not going to do that right now. We can also get uh, mermaids and octopuses as uh, neutral encounters in the deep sea, all are level uh, 10. Uh, now it's kind of a new unit, uh, you notice their cleric is green, and that's not just because it's an enemy cleric, but it's the upgraded cleric class, uh, that is a shaman, and once a cleric uh, updates, upgrades into a shaman, uh, they go from two back row heals to having three uh, back row heals, so it's important that we try to take out those angels as quick as possible, uh, otherwise that shaman is going to be healing them up, so... Now, uh, the angels, I'm not using undead. Uh, I'm going to wait to recruit uh, the more advanced undead. The, uh, right now, the only undead we can recruit are from the Pogrom Forest, the ghosts and the skeletons. I'm going to wait to recruit uh, undead uh, wraiths, which are the upgraded uh, skeletons, and then phantoms, the upgraded ghosts. Uh, the regular undead, they don't promote into... Uh, you can't like gain a bunch of levels and promote your skeletons and the wraiths and your ghosts and the phantoms. So no point in getting the uh, the weaker, the the lower uh, class. So I just ran from that battle because the ninjas in the back row, unlike the the uh, the Raven Men unit that weakened that uh, unit up, the ninjas uh, in that uh, thing in that unit can target the our back row characters, so they can pick off those uh, weakened characters that we put in the back row, so. Not good. Unfortunately, they're ninjas, we'd like to be able to target them, but they're being protected by those knights. So the knights are doing a very knightly thing, guarding the, the ninjas. So, they're being good teammates. Even though you figure that, you know, ninjas are more evil and knights tend to be good, but 
I guess they're working in teams, so be able to get hopefully get a good uh, attack here. Hopefully our uh, Hellhound there uh, could hit the ninja, but I guess I had it on strong, so it attacked the uh, the unit leader. All right. So now, unfortunately, this is not going to be too too good. Uh, we have so many physical attacks in the front row that can't reach those uh, fairies in the back. So we gotta hope that our Doll Mage uh, has some good accuracy and hits it with their acid attack. Stun will help uh, mitigate the damage that we take, so yeah. It's gonna take at least, you know, maybe another two or three, depending on how we roll. Uh, most likely three more acid hits to take out those uh, fairies, so... Maybe we'll get lucky and take out the Raven Man with all our physical attacks and still have a few physical attacks left over to take out the fairies, so. But now the battle has shifted down here. Eventually we're going to head back up to our northern part of the army because they got that mermaid unit that is going to uh, fight. And once again, we left another enemy with just one hit point. Hopefully the Doll Mage goes before the Samurai and... Oh, because otherwise the damage would have taken that uh, knight out easily, and we would have saved our samurai's attack for the ninja or the knight. So, oh. but well, now the ninjas are exposed. So, ninjas are kind of like fairies in the sense that they tend to have low physical defense. Uh, and they rely more on their agility. Their, uh, I guess you would call agility tanks. They rely on evasion rather than uh, straight up physical defense. So, oh, getting back to these angel units, I was talking about undead not using them. I got so sidetracked on a bunch of things. But uh, if you are using undead, uh, you don't want to have them fight angel units. This is a bad unit for undead to fight because one, the shaman has the healing which could eliminate the undead, and two, even if the shaman wasn't there, uh, the angel's uh, front row and back row attacks are both uh, white magic elemental, so they can take out uh, undead units, so yeah, definitely not uh, a unit that you want to be fighting uh, undead in your army. But like I said, we're not using any undead in our army uh, until we're able to get the uh, updated undeads, so... Yeah, hey, I said we're going to head back to the north, and hey, we're back there, so... Get to see our octopus is in, in, uh, in use again. So, we have our Valkyrie in the back row uh, for defensive purposes, and also because uh, I knew this unit would be, using a, would be fighting on water. It's their favorite terrain because the octopus is in it. The Valkyrie in the back row has the uh, lightning attack, and it makes sense that... Uh, water enemies are weak against lightning. So both the mermaid and the octopuses have the lowest uh, physical, uh, lowest resistances to lightning. So the Valkyrie, when she hits, uh, should do some pretty decent damage. So Now even though our octopus is kind of under-leveled because we haven't been using him uh, lately, uh, he has some good physical defense, so he should be able to survive uh, a lot of these fights and the four attacks in the front row means that he'll do some pretty decent damage and we can make up for some of his level losses or that he doesn't have uh, by giving him like a weapon you know so for instance that uh, octopus has gained four to six strength on a level up so depending if you get really bad levels uh, something like the relic sword that gives plus 24 strength can account for basically four to six levels of strength growth for the octopus so makes that stat much higher, so. Finally, we took out that angel in the front row. That cleric kept, uh, well, that shaman, I should say, kept healing it, so. But now, this unit should fall pretty easily because uh, it only has one attack. Uh, the angel in the back row has a banished spell. And, uh, so it's just gonna be a unit that's not gonna be able to do a lot of damage, but has some pretty decent survivability, but 
be able to take it out, so. This is an interesting unit. Gotta watch our fairy there. She uh, is vulnerable now to that dragon in the back row. Remember, dragons in the back row have a fire breath, so. See if we can take it out with our wizard. Mm -hmm. Their tactics must be set to leader, because that's the only reason why the uh, dragon would be attacking our leader. It's a good thing the leader, uh, our uh, wizard got kissed there by a fairy. Did a little bit of extra damage to the dragon. The dragon's the scariest, obviously the scariest uh, unit uh, in that. Or character in that unit, so. But this unit isn't scary at all. We got that shaman uh, angel unit here, so we should be able to finish it off here, hopefully. So, yeah, we got some dealing a lot of damage with uh, both of our characters here, so. Now, if the uh, hellhound goes before the shaman, oh, no. Let's see, if not, uh, if the sh uh, hellhound would have won first, it would have been able to knock out the shaman and then use its remaining attack to take out the angel, but that's a good thing that the hellhound missed there. Otherwise, it would have probably knocked out the shaman and it would have started retreating and now it'll just be forced to keep attacking us, so we'll have a second chance to finish it off. Let's see if we can finish off some of these ninjas here. Donk. Ooh, good, they're missing all our characters there, so. Alright. Well, the knight is dead. Won't be able to finish off all the ninjas. We only have two more attacks. One with the hellhound, one with the uh, wild man there. But we do some decent damage, so. We have a unit in the back there that uh, we'll be able to catch it, so I wasn't too worried about it, so we'll cut it off. And I was surprised that uh, I thought the cleric unit might also start trying to retreat, uh, go back to that unguarded city, but oh, it's heading toward this city, so we'll finish it off with this unit. Oh, right, we took out the cleric before, the shaman before it could heal the angel here, and angel has no more attacks, so another unit taken care of. Have to check our cleric, see if uh, she can promote. So. Oh, and we got another fight here. Let's see if we can. Uh, take out these raven men and still have enough ta attacks left over to take out the fairies so fairies are low flying units so they may ret when they retreat they may retreat over the mountains which is what we don't want them to do but uh, alternatively they may retreat uh, over the land and if that's the case then they'll be hit by that uh, wizard unit that's also going to be cutting off the uh, that ninja who's going to be retreating so Let's see if we can finish these guys off here. Nope. But hopefully they retreat uh, not over the mountains and head toward that wizard unit there. He's going to be putting in a lot of work here fighting this uh, dragon unit and then also be fighting the... Uh, also be fighting all those retreating units, so... And we want to take out those retreating units. So I'm just going to make this dragon unit retreat with that fortune card. And have this unit retreat a little bit. Create some distance. Take out these retreating units first. And then maybe push this uh, wizard unit back to the temple, to, uh, the city over there to heal up. It's taken quite a bit of damage there. At least the uh, werewolf, uh, the, not the werewolf, the hellhound there. Our werewolves are getting a little bit of a break. They're hanging out, so. Ooh, we got a Dragos. That is the uh, item that we need to use on a Beast Man. Uh, or a Beast Master. Once we hit, I believe, level 12, 
we can change our beast men into beast masters, which is the end of the normal class uh, advancement for beast men. But when we get the stones of Dragos, uh, you can use that and transform the beast master into a dragoneer. And we saw a dragoneer in the last stage in the enemy units. They were those uh, blue guys with a the sword. They trade their sword, their whip for a sword. And they help dragons fight a little bit better, so... Alright, way to go, wizard unit. You uh, took care of all those retreating uh, reinforcements. And that other unit is retreating, so surprisingly. And I've neglected Orpheus, so they sent a unit to try to take him out, so... Orpheus, retreat! We don't want you fighting! Oh no, I've been neglecting this uh, northern part of the campaign, so... That mermaid was sneaky. They knew that it couldn't defeat our mermaid unit, and then uh, or our, our, our uh, octopus unit. And, but one of the bad things about uh, the tactic that it's just used there is uh, eventually it's going to have to head back east if it wants to go and attack our uh, our base. So even though it's a little further south than us. Uh, our, our uh, water unit will be able to cut it off if it tries to cut east. Because while it's going east, our unit will be going south, so. Put it on weak here to take out these octopuses and uh, cause our wizard to target them. We'll notice when the wizard attacks, it'll use the uh, lightning, the bolt spell, because that's, you know, the wizard will automatically. Uh, use uh, the element that will deal the most damage. Now it's not doing any damage, now it's all warm. What's going on, warm? Maybe it's because we gave it the sword. The dragon can't wield a sword. No, that doesn't matter. Uh, it, it, it doesn't matter, you know, it's not like, you know, the warm's attack. It, it's just all about, you know, the, the stat bonuses. Uh, the game doesn't think that uh, a dragon shouldn't be able to wield a sword, you know? It doesn't really have hands like a human does. I mean, it has claws, but it can't, you know, hold the sword and use it. Uh, so the game doesn't, you know, penalize your unit for giving it a weapon that it can't theoretically use. All you care about is the, the numbers. So, all we care about is that plus 24 strength that the sword is given to the... Uh, thing to the warm so we also care about healing up this unit so took a little bit of a beating there uh, so whoop, and our unit there is healed up our princess unit so they can move off so hmm well we did a lot of good damage to uh, the enemy here what do we got here another knight unit coming out but that looks like a good ending point for this episode so take care uh, have a good one, and we'll continue this battle in our next episode. Have a good day. Bye!